but I'll just proceed. I'll just proceed and um, uh, it shouldn't be that long, but if you have um, any questions, uh, please do uh, put it in the chat or um, uh, maybe wait to the end. If you can't wait, if you can't stay until the end, then um, uh, yeah, just put your questions in the Q&A box. That will be uh, good as well. Okay, so uh, my name is Sophia Lee and I'm the Regional Manager for Southeast Asia for the University of Glasgow. And I'll be introducing you to, um, uh, well, I'll be talking to you about um, which degree should you choose to study. Okay, how can you select your subject areas uh, if for those who, who, you know, um, are thinking of one subject area, but also thinking about another subject area. And um, I will also touch on the topic of flexible degrees because that's the focus on, you know, um, what type of degrees that you can do um, in the UK. So, let me just... Uh, Okay, so uh, which degree should you study? Um, first, you have to ask yourself whether um, you are interested in a single subject area or multiple subject area. So it, it, maybe you're interested in economics, maybe you're interested in economics um, uh, and politics, maybe you're interested in uh, 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 what you call that, physics only or, or uh, bio, technology only. So yeah, it, it really depends on what are the areas of interest um, that you are interested in. So what you should do is like identify, you know, um, the your favorite subject and what are the possible subject areas you can study um, in a degree. Degrees in the UK are available in single honours degree. Okay. And also as part of a joint multiple or combined honours degree meaning that single honours degree means you focus on one subject area, um, for example, biology, okay, or biotechnology, for example. If like, like a joint degree or multiple or combined honours, it's usually, um, usually it's two subject areas, okay. Uh, for example, I, I gave you an example earlier, economics and um, politics, okay, so that, that, is uh, that could be a joint degree that you can take. And some degrees allow students to create bespoke programs incorporating both arts and science subjects. And these kinds of options offer students a range of uh, depth, depth, uh, depth in knowledge and also um, with greater control over their own learning, over your own learning. Okay, these degrees are known as flexible degrees, which the University of Glasgow offers, and I will be explaining it a little bit further um, on flexible degrees in the next few slides. And um, my last point is uh, that some degrees do not allow flexibility or, or flexible degree structure because, um, uh, you know, certain programs have various requirement um, factors, for example, medicine, they've got a set, um, like either five or six years, you have to do clinical and things like that. So um, medicine, dentistry, vet medicine program, those are the, 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 the type of programs that may um, not be able to do flexible degrees. Although you might want to check out um, at the universities you're, you're thinking of applying to, um, they may have intercalated degrees, degree options, which means that um, after your second or your third year, you'll be able to study one or two years of a BSc degree, um, a Bachelor's of Science degree, and um, after that, come back to your medicine degree completed, and then at the end of the whole duration, you will receive two um, Bachelor's degree, your medicine degree and another BSc degree. Okay, so those are uh, usually uh, named intercalated degrees. So you should check that out as well. So how do I choose a degree? First, identify the subject areas that you are interested in and the future options that it offers you. Whether you're interested, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're very keen, you know, to um, get yourself involved in the careers, um, uh, like, you know, what 
what psychologists do, um, you're interested in, in, you know, how they work and things like that. Uh, and whether, you know, the country that you are planning to, either you're planning to stay back um, in Singapore, come back to Singapore or go to another country or you want to keep your options open, um, you know, where you plan to, what you plan to do in the future, um, you also must think about whether the subject area um, uh, allows you to go to places that you want to settle in and things like that. Okay. The second thing is to rank the variables that are most important for you. For example, I've listed a few variables here. Um, for example, like university rankings, location, tuition fees and living costs. Those are just like costs. Um, entry requirements, whether you can meet the, the particular university's entry requirements, because some um, universities have higher requirements than others. Some are a little bit more flexible, um, but it depends on from university to university. The program structure, whether you prefer this program structure as compared to um, you know, another program structure, for example, a uh, sandwich program, or uh, an optional internship program, which is not compulsory, and you can decide later whether you want to do internship or not. Um, yeah, depending on your your area of uh, your subject area. Specialization and focus. Certain programs will have different specializations. Um, certain programs are general, which covers a little bit uh, a little bit about everything. And then, um, of course, scholarships. Um, scholarships would come in. Um, the cost factor as well um, and other factors that you may think is important for you okay and then the the sorry oh got numbering issue uh, the third one would be research the information based on variables okay so you list down you know the rank your variables first and then do get the information of each of the universities that you're looking for um, the location, the rankings, and things like that. And then after that, um, um, you know, shortlist your universities. I would recommend you to shortlist about five degree options or five universities, okay? Just so that um, there is not too many um, uh, options that will confuse you and not too little options that you will have to do the whole process again to submit your UCAS application. Because UCAS, you are able to apply to up to five um, universities at the same time in one application, okay? So I would suggest about five um, degree or university options. Then um, this slide will explain to you about flexible degrees at the University of Glasgow. So this is just a case study. Um, you have uh, other universities in the UK which are offering flexible degrees, but it differs, the structure will differ from university to university. So for example, for University of Glasgow, we have, we offer um, these undergraduate qualifications, which is a Master's of Arts, um, a Master's of Arts, Social Science, so Social Science subjects, a Bachelor's of Science, a Master's of Science, okay? The difference is, so these Masters of Arts, all right, they are flexible degrees. And in Scotland, we call um, our Arts and Social Science uh, degree qualifications MA, okay, Masters of Arts. Um, this is not to be confused with the a postgraduate Masters. This is an undergraduate Masters, okay? And um, the BSc will be the normal Bachelors of Science. And then the MSCI, which is a, a five years program, which has the additional year of um, industry um, with uh, our industry partners. Okay, so that one is like a sandwich um, program. Okay, and it's usually for science uh, subjects only. Okay, these are all called uh, flexible degrees. You have greater control over your own learning. All right, and um, the two points that it offers is exposure. So you study two to three subject, um, subjects in years one and two. And remember I was mentioning about, you may be able to, uh, you may be able to combine arts and science subjects. That's what is happening in our years one and two. It's, um, there are three 
subject um, areas that you can choose. And um, yeah, you may mix uh, uh, with another college as well, take a subject from another college as well. So I explain, I'll explain later in the, the structure a bit clear, clearer in the next slide. So it also offer, offers flexibility, offers the opportunity to change your degree midway. So if you, you know, you take chemistry, physics, math, all right, um, in year one as your three subject areas, um, or chemistry, physics, business, all right? And then in your um, second or your third year, you feel like, oh, okay, okay, I, I, I don't really want to do chemistry. I think I will go for business. It's, it looks um, better for me. It, it fits me, my personality more and things like that. So you are able to um, switch midway as long as you have passed the modules and you have taken year one and year two modules. Um, and then year three onwards, you'll be able to switch your, your, your speciali specialism and then graduate with that specialism that you focused on. All right. And then if those for those who are interested in engineering, we've got a bachelor's of engineering, BEng and MEng, okay, master's of engineering. So these, these two programs, these two qualifications are, um, are undergraduate qualifications. Okay, although it's called an MEng, okay, it's still an undergraduate qualification. It's it just it's similar to this uh, M Sky. Um, it just means that uh, this one is five years, this one is four years. The five years one will have a sandwich um, uh, internship uh, uh, or, or year in industry, okay, within the program. So all uh, BEng or NMeng students study the same modules in year one, meaning that you can request to change um, engineering disciplines from year two onwards, okay? So you don't have to decide right away. When you apply, you decide on a, uh, an area. And then when you um, enter, about to enter year two, you can still switch your en engineering disciplines because you study the same modules in year one. Okay, so it gives you a little bit more time to uh, test and feel the waters a little bit before you um, make your decision, your final decision on um, whether you want aeronautical engineering or biomedical engineering. Okay, so this is an example of a BSc single honours degree. Okay, single honours. So in year one, you will take three subject areas. So this student has chosen, he, he has applied for UCAS, uh, physics in UCAS, all right? So usually they will study their first option, which is physics. And then the second subject option should be um, something within the same school or the same college, all right? So the student has um, uh, uh, taken chemistry. The third subject can be anything at all. So it can be from, a school of business can be from the College of Arts um, or, or School of Social Sciences. It, 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 whatever the university offers, they can choose it as a third um, subject. In year two, um, the student has dropped astronomy, okay, and focus on physics and chemistry, which, you know, might be, he might stick to physics, but he also might be able to switch to chemistry. And then in year three, they, the student has decided to stick to physics and then they specialize in physics in year three and four. And then the uh, degree awarded is a BSc with honors in physics. Okay, right. So this next slide is um, explaining to you the structure of the MA, Masters of Arts, joint honors, all right? Practically similar, okay, in the number of years in Scotland. So University of Glasgow is in Scotland. Um, education system uh, for degree, bachelor's degrees are four years, similar to the US. And um, we have year one, three subject areas as well. Okay, so the student has applied for business and management and um, uh, they choose Spanish, okay, um, as the second subject. And then the third subject can be anything at all in the whole university, anything, anything at all, all right? And then the second year, they stick to business management and Spanish. And then the third subject, they have switched 
just to get an exposure because maybe history is not their cup of tea. Or if they want to continue with history, it's fine as well. All right. It just gives you that extra option to switch to when you enter third year. And in third year, they continue on with business and Spanish, business and Spanish. So in a different scenario, if this student would have maintained their history level one and continued with history level two, for example, okay, this student will be able to switch um, between uh, like if they want to maintain uh, business and then they want to switch Spanish with history, that's possible as well. As long as you pass level one and level two um, of that subject and um, it, it, it shouldn't be an issue to switch your, you know, your joint majors, your joint honours, okay? And then they specialise in that, that two final areas in years three and four and they graduate with um, a joint um, honours degree. So this, in this case, would be Masters of Arts, Honours, Business and Management, and Spanish. Okay, so there are over 700 undergraduate degree combinations with flexible degrees across our colleges. We've got four colleges um, with multiple schools within it. And um, you'll be able to, you know, scan this little dinosaur QR code and um, find out what subject areas we offer as well. And um, just to show you a little bit about the university um, and um, if you're thinking about, you know, taking flexible degrees or studying in, in, in Scotland um, or studying at the University of Glasgow, this gives you an idea of um, the university. I think I need to Sorry, I need to reshare this because it might not have the sound. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, so that's how the university looks like and a little bit about the university. So to find out more, you'll be able to visit our website, um, www.gla.ac.uk or just scan this QR code. For those of you who want to download a copy of this um, presentation, I'll give you a QR code later. Uh, but basically before that, we've got my contact details. If you have any questions later on, feel free to contact me as well. Um, my email address is here. We've got WhatsApp as well. And um, if you're interested in any of our programs and want to receive um, just uh, information about that particular program, about the particular, for that particular uh, uh, intake, like September 2022, um, you'll be able to fill up a form uh, to register your interest with us and we'll be able to send you the specified information that um, filter out the information um, for you. Okay. Right. So this uh, QR code will enable you to download a presentation, the presentation slides of uh, what I've just um, presented. Um, it's a short one, uh, but you'll have my contact details. And if you have any questions, please do um, let me know uh, in the Q&A box or maybe the I think 
Yeah, the Q&A box would be perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for your attention. And thank you, Miss Lee, for your insightful sharing. So um, everyone, you can actually uh, ask her in the Q&A box. Otherwise, you can also head back to who below to um, uh, check with her. Okay. Any questions so far? I think our participants are a bit shy Holding today. Up. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, come chat with me um, in... Um, oh, I think I have one question. Oh, okay. Uh, where, where do I see it? Oh, okay, um, okay, in the Q&A. All right. Do UK universities have foundation programs for students who have completed O-levels to enter university programs like medicine without taking A-levels? There are some universities, but I think IDP will be able to answer that a little bit more in detail. If you have an IDP counsellor, please um, um, seek that um, answer. But in short, for University of Glasgow, we don't have a foundation in medicine. Our medicine um, program um, students will take uh, will come in uh, usually from A levels and IB, uh, and we don't we have a foundation program for other programs, but not for medicine at all. Okay, so hope that answers your question. Any other questions? Okay, another maybe. Okay, there's another question. What are the entry tests that students need to take to enter UK universities? Well, it depends on what um, programs you're applying for. For example, for medicine, um, some UK universities would require UCAT, um, some EMAT. So there are two different types of aptitude tests um, that we require for um, um, uh, medicine. Uh, but if you're applying for law, certain universities would need you to take um, the LNET, uh, Law National Aptitude Test. Uh, some don't need uh, for you to take LNET, so you just have to check with the the, the, the universities that you're interested with. Um, but other than that, I don't think there are um, a lot of other tests that you need to take for other um, programs. Yeah, not like not for social sciences or arts. Very little tests, unless it's something specified by that certain university. So, um, yeah. I hope that answers your question. Any other questions? What is this? Um, okay, so what is the name of the portal to apply for five universities? It's UCAS. So um, uh, UCAS.com. www.ucas.com. It's um, a platform or a portal where most universities would, you can apply to most universities uh, in the UK. Um, yeah. Um, for undergraduate at the moment, yeah, undergraduate. I think they they're gonna they may make it available for postgraduate, but I think not a lot of, of universities are in the postgraduate uh, realm for UCAS yet. So undergraduate, yeah. Okay, uh, there's a link there for you as well. Okay, the. May, might be one more question. Are there any courses that students can take online remotely from Singapore? Um, there are some courses um, available 
uh, it really depends on the university's offering. So we do have a few online uh, courses um, um, available and you can find that out on our website. Just uh, type in um, uh, distance learning program on our website and it will uh, come out. There's not loads of it because our focus is um, on campus, you know, the experience and, and things like that. But we do have a few um, online distance learning programs that you can um, uh, explore with the University of Glasgow. For other universities, um, if you have a university in mind, you may ask that university um, whether they have it or just search on your website. If not, then maybe um, speak to your IDP counsellor and they may be able to shortlist some for you, depending on your interest area. All right, I think that should be it. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. If you guys have any more questions, just head to Hulu and you can chat with Miss Leah.